Hey class, it's Bill Berry here with an introduction to the Python debugger. This isn't required material, but it's useful stuff. Some of you have struggled with, um, you know, get, trying to debug your programs and figuring out what's going wrong here and there, and this is a useful step. We don't have the nicest debugger in the world, but it's a rudimentary one that we'll do, you know, we'll do for now. So we want to give a little intro to it and show you some of the tools that are there so that you'll know what to expect. And then when you get a nicer debugger in some other languages, you'll be even more pleased with all the things you can do. But this one will certainly do for a start, so let's jump in and look at what's possible. First of all, let's talk about what a debugger is. The difference between testing and debugging is that in testing you're actually looking for bugs and you're trying to validate that the program does the right thing in as many scenarios as you can. So that's looking for the fact that there are bugs or finding the existence of bugs. Debugging though is we want to find out where the bug is in our code. We want to actually dive in a little deeper to diagnose what's going wrong. So debugging is getting in there, you know, deep and figuring it out. Testing is just finding the fact that they're there. So there are usually a set of rudimentary tools. At least these tools are going to be offered in the most rudimentary debuggers. First is the ability to control the speed of execution. If you run your program, things go by really quickly. And so you don't really get to stop and think and inspect and kind of ponder things very well or, or check like exactly what the code is doing. It all runs by too quickly. But a debugger lets you control that so you can walk through step by step and inspect things. So that's really important. Next is the ability to set and reset breakpoints. So you can say, hey, when you get to this line, I want to stop because I want to look at things and see how things are going. So that's, that's the idea of a breakpoint. Next is the ability to view the contents of variables. So you can look at all your local variables and if you choose the global variables. So what we typically have done perhaps is we've put in a whole bunch of print statements all over the place. Well that's fine but that takes time to write them and then you gotta go take them all out because you don't want to leave them. So that's a lot of work for temporary stuff. So just seeing what is in your variables is sometimes extremely useful. Now, in some debuggers, they're going to offer fancier things. For instance, you can actually change the data. If you don't like what's going on, you say, ah, I see what happened. This is the wrong value. But if it were the right value, would it proceed from here correctly? So you can set the variables to different values. That's kind of cool. Next is you can also set conditional breakpoints. Rather than saying, I always want to stop on this line, you can say, when this variable gets to the value 0, like I know somewhere it's getting set to 0 inappropriately, when it gets to 0, please stop at that moment so I can see where it was. So that's also useful. And then also uh, we can see rudimentary local and global variables but in a fancier debugger you can also drill down. For instance if you have lists of uh, other kinds of objects or anything fancy you can drill into the list and drill into the objects and actually kind of expose layer by layer what's going on and then there may be other advanced features as well but certainly this is what are these are sort of typical things that debuggers offer the python debugger offers those rudimentary ones that i talked about in that second set of bullet points so that's what we're going to look at today and we'll come back and look at a summary but let's actually go and uh, look at a program and see how we can use the debugger in uh, sort of a hands-on sort of way so first we have this program that inputs names and customer balances and then it prints them out. And so when I run it, I'll just run my program and I'll put in the name. I'll put in uh, John Doe and the customer balance, one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. And when it prints it out, we see that the balance is negative. Well, that, I mean, it's zero, but that shouldn't be because it should be one, two, three, four, dot, five, six. So something is definitely going wrong, but let's say that we don't know where. Sometimes our eyes don't see things that maybe should be obvious. So how can we fix that? Well, the first step is we've got to turn on the debugger, and you do it from in here. If you look for it in your program window, you won't see it, and one might reasonably expect that you'd have an option to turn it on there but you don't. So from in here from the shell window where you ran the program which so that means you need to run the program even if it's going to blow up even if whatever you've got to get the shell window that's associated with the output and I'm going to say deep, uh, debug and then I'm going to turn on the debugger. That's going to turn on the little debugger window. I can now close this window and leave the debugger window up. Blah, blah, there we go and move it over here and I'm going to make it a little taller just so I can see everything that's going on. 
The next thing is you can check what you want to see. You will see the stack. The stack means what functions have called what other functions, so you'll know where you are in that hierarchy, which is good. The local variables are there by default. You can also turn on globals if you like. We don't have any globals of note because we haven't run the program, but we might turn that on. And then source, and eh, you probably don't need that because you have your source here anyway. So let's start there. And then we come back over to our program window, which you could make you know less wide if you want. Uh, we'll you know maybe we'll do that a little bit so that there's room for the debugger to uh, to you know our window to be able to to be seen. And then we just run our program. Now, if you just run it from this point, it will stop at the beginning, and that's great. The debugger will automatically stop for you right before the program begins, so you can debug right from the top of your program. But another thing we might want to do is to set a breakpoint, and a breakpoint says, hey, debugger, when you get to this certain point, please stop. Like in the input customer balance function, something's going wrong, so I'm just going to right-click right here and choose set breakpoint. That turns it yellow, and then the debugger knows when I get to that point to make sure it stops. Now I'm going to run the program and I'm going to make this window less wide too so I can always get to that window if I want. Okay, so now notice I haven't even gotten the prompt yet because remember the debugger is going to start stop at the very very beginning. So you'll notice right now it's it's in a funny place. You'll see this thing that says I'm in main module blah 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 line one Def, uh, define main. So we are literally at the very top of the program and nothing has been executed yet. At this point, if you wanted to start from the very top, you could do this step function. And step means I want to go step by step through my program, so step to the next line. You can also say, in this case, go. And Go says, I just want you to run normally until you get to a breakpoint. Or if there's no breakpoint, it'll just run the rest of the way through. So that's very useful. We can also look at some other options. Sometimes you don't want to follow uh, the program into a function. You just want to assume that whole function gets executed and comes back. So stepping over says, I don't want to dive in. I just want to kind of stay at this level. Stepping out is very useful because sometimes you get in deeper than you want to be. You get into some function code that you don't care about or you get into some deep Python code especially and you're like, eh, I don't want to be in here at all. So stepping out says, okay, pop up one level. I don't want to be in that function, so get me out of here one level. And then of course you can quit as well. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to say go. And go uh, is going to actually run our program up to that point. So it asks for the name and I'm going to say, you know, John Doe and I'm going to put in, uh, notice that it did now stop at my uh, at my next point, right? So it stopped at this point of input cust balance and it set, it shows us that it's on this line. <clears throat> if we click on this, I believe it's just going to show us a, um, it's going to show us like a gray line or something. Anyway, so we're on that line and now we can step step by step. So I'm going to say step, okay, see the gray line there? It's ready to is issue that uh, statement. So if I do one more step, now it's getting into some deep Python code. I don't want to do that. I'm going to step out of that. And now it's probably sitting there waiting for me to type in my balance. Sure enough, one, two, three, four point five six. And I'm going to hit enter. And now control comes back to the debugger. And you can see that, sure enough, it's, uh, it's got the values. Now look at my, at my local variables. Okay, I've got one called balance and I've one got, got one called cust balance. That's kind of a clue. But now I can keep stepping and watch what happens. So if customer balance is greater than or equal to zero, it's taking this path, so it's going to assign balance type to non-negative, step, and now it comes here, and it's about to return balance and balance type. Uh-oh, wait a minute, it's returning balance. Ah, I set balance to zero up here, but then I used cust balance to store the data. So I'm going to send back that zero and the balance type of non-negative. That's where that zero is coming from. So I need to get rid of this line. That is my problem. So sometimes the debugger will let you, if you look at your locals carefully, you can see those kinds of errors and say, oops, now, now I see what's going on. It's doing exactly what I told it. That's just not what I wanted. So in that case, that's really good. And now I can say, okay, I've seen the problem, just go. Or I can say quit and it'll just finish things up. And you can see, sure enough, there's our, there's our results. So that's really good. Uh, that's one thing that the debugger can help you to do. And then you know I'm going to go through and I'm going to comment out that line for now. 
and uh, and then I can take off the breakpoint because that's not going to be needed at this point and I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now another thing that you can do, let's let's do one other example so I want you to see some slightly more complex output here in the local variables. I want you to see something that is a list. So I'm going to put a, a breakpoint right here where I'm going to uh, split up the name into name parts and then I'm going to go ahead and run my program again and I'm going to type in when I get to there notice again it always start, stops at the beginning and that's kind of uh, uh, hard to remember sometimes that it's not stopping where you wanting, want it stops stops right at the start I'm going to say go to get down to this point I have some interaction in your screen you'll want to have all these windows where you can see them all I don't have enough space and I'm going to say you know Jonathan uh, Hewitt Jones the third. Okay, now it comes back to this point, so we're in the debugger, and it's about to split the name up into parts. That's fine. I can say step. So notice it is split it up, and now if you look at there is name uh, variable, but also here's name parts, and you can see the whole list. So it's a list. You see the square brackets, and you see all the individual pieces now broken up into a list, which is cool. So you can see things that are a little more advanced, and you can you know sort of follow what's going on with their contents, which is another really useful thing. So at this point, I can say quit if I just want to terminate and don't want to even bother, or I can say go so it finishes its work. And then, of course, uh, here we go, and we can do the rest. Customer balance, blah, blah, blah. And we can see, oops, balance is not defined, so we have another problem that we need to go figure out. We're printing something that, uh, that we don't have. Let's see, custom balance, what's going on? Yeah, we don't want to return balance here. We want to return cust balance. So anyway, we can debug the rest of the program just like that. And then I can clear the breakpoints. So that's the basics of how to use the debugger. And let's look now at what the basic steps are so that you'll have some sort of reference. First, yeah, I guess we don't really care about this word. Yeah, OK. So first is you run your program, bring up the shell window. Second, you toggle on the debugger. And remember, that's in the shell window. You go to debug, debugger, and toggle that on. Then, if you'd like, in your program window, set breakpoints and then run your program. Then back to the debugger window, turn on options that you'd like, like if you want to see globals, click on source so you see at least a highlighting of your code of where you are currently, and then don't forget that the debugger is going to stop for you right at the start of the program, so you've got to, if you set a breakpoint, then say go to get to that breakpoint. Then remember to have all your windows so that you can see. Sometimes when the debugger appears to be doing nothing, it's actually waiting for user input, so you need to note that, oh, it's sitting there waiting for me, so I need to go ahead and type like I would normally do. Uh, remember uh, then that in the debugger window you can look at variable contents, you can step into your code, or an important one is stepping out. If you get in too deep, get into Python code, etc., you just step out so you kind of get back to the level that you care about. And you can also hit go if you want to set another breakpoint and then stop at that point. Because sometimes you go, oh, okay, I don't need to keep stopping here, I want to like jump down to a different, a lower part of my program. So all of those are really good things that you can do with the debugger. Uh, it's a little odd to get used to it first, to your eyes to get used to interacting with those three windows, the debugging window, your your shell window where input and output's happening, and then your program. But once you get the hang of it, you will be happy to have those tools, especially things like local variables, where you don't have to keep putting in print statements all day long and then taking them out before you turn them in. So good stuff basic tools in the debugger. It ain't fancy, but it is something, and, uh, and it might be useful to you as you write your last couple programs. So that takes us to the end of this video. Let me know if you have any other questions, and I'm sure we'll talk about it in the forums or in email. Thanks for watching.